Last summer, we visited Woodgrove Farm in Chilliwack to explore the inter-row cover cropping practices implemented by Charles Dick in his hazelnut orchards. Inter-row cover cropping involves deliberately seeding and maintaining cover crops between the rows of hazelnut trees, providing benefits to the soil, the trees and even the farmers. I'm a third generation farmer. My brother and I farm alongside my dad. My grandpa started the farm in the 70s. My dad separately bought in in the 90s and now I'm, uh, my brother and I are managing our poultry farm. We have broilers and layers. And we also, in 2017, started to get into hazelnuts. And over the past seven years, we've increased our acres planted from four acres all the way to 30. Most other hazelnut orchards globally have bare dirt floors in their orchards. We find that with grass seed in our alleys, we're able to get into our orchards quicker after a rain event. Uh, and later into the season without dealing with mud uh, when we need to harvest. Intentionally, we're planting grass. When we first put in the orchard and we planted the trees, we seeded grass. We didn't seed them between the trees, but um, we, we seeded it in the alley intentionally. The reason we can do it is because we are smaller scale. A lot of the large commercial orchards globally don't have the labor and resources to seed grass. Whereas with our smaller orchards in BC that are more spread out, farmers are able to mow because they see the benefit of seeding grass. There are other benefits to seeding grass in the alleys. We know that it increases the organic matter that is in the soil. Uh, we deal with a lot less soil erosion and we um, are able to retain our nutrients better in the soil. In the 2024 growing season, Charles has welcomed the BC Living Labs project onto his farm. They are actively measuring the incorporation of legumes into these inter-row cover crops, particularly the impact of nitrogen levels on the trees and the cover crop itself. They are also looking at the impacts this practice has on soil carbon and organic matter levels, porosity and water infiltration, as well as the bulk density of the soil. This year we're involved with a trial with uh, BC Living Labs in introducing a clover blend into our alleys. Or the idea is that we're mixing in some legumes which have a benefit for our nitrogen uh, sequestration and um, naturally keeping our nitrogen levels higher in our soils. We know that this is a problem with nitrogen stability and so introducing clover, we're hoping that it'll improve our nitrogen levels in our soils without having to apply fertilizer. The trial is going to be ongoing. Each year we will assess again if it's working or what needs to change. The intent is that this will be a longer term trial Really where we will start to see results is in the yield of our hazelnut trees. Ideally, this can improve our yield, uh, but if we don't see any difference in yield, then it would be hard to say whether it, it's a mix that's worth doing or not. Maybe the tree health will be better, but ultimately our goal is to get more hazelnuts off of the same acres. And so if it does that or if it doesn't, we will see. Dr. Sylvia Nayamazi has been working with the BC Living Labs on the project at Woodrow Farm. She has been involved in the planning, the design and the implementation of the trial and is now taking measurements, collecting the data and she will eventually tabulate the results before disseminating the information to BC hazelnut growers. This experiment is about cover cropping in hazelnut alleyways. So what we are looking at is that we developed uh, an extensive experiment with two main treatments in its design. We are comparing a perennial grass alleyway, which means like we have planted grasses in the alleyways of these young hazelnut trees, and we are comparing that against a perennial grass, which is planted with a mixture of clover, and we are using white clover. So to be specific, in the perennial grass, we have a lone mixture grass, which has in sheep fescue, it has in rye grass and um, it also having creeping fescue. So that is all perennial grass treatment. And then the other treatment has in clover with that perennial grass mixed together. 
So this experiment is of course replicated. We have three blocks in the hazelnut field and uh, we are hoping it will take about five years. The goals of this experiment is we are incorporating in the clover which is able to fix nitrogen in the soil. So given that it has been mixed with the perennial grass, we are expecting that when we grow the clover in that treatment, we are going to increase on how much nitrogen is fixed. And we anticipate that when this clover has fixed in nitrogen, it is going to be beneficial to it as a crop, but also to the grasses that are uh, growing underneath. So we are hoping that that will be able to reduce on how much nitrogen the farmer can be able to apply because when we are mowing this clover, we don't carry it away from the field, we leave it in the ground and after its decomposition it will of course increase the nitrogen in those alleyways and throughout the whole field. We are increasing plant matter in the field whereby instead of only having a perennial grass or a rye grass growing in the hazelnut alleyways, we are bringing in a legume and with the support of nitrogen fix, this nitrogen will also be used by the grass which also requires a lot of carbon and nitrogen so we are increasing the diversity of the plants in the hazelnut alleyways, same as the organic matter, and we are hoping that when we increase the soil organic matter, we are also going to increase the soil carbon, which is being sequestered in that soil, and hence being able to contribute to the mitigation of the climate if this beneficial management practice is taken on by the growers. So we are anticipating that if this clover is able to grow, supports also the grass to grow all year around. And from our past experience already from the 2024 growing season, we can see that the grass which was planted under the clover is actually growing all year round and covering compared to the perennial grass which was planted alone without any, 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 any clover. So we are anticipating that as we build in more soil organic matter, increasing more soil organic carbon, we are going also to be able to improve on the physical soil health characteristics. For example, when we Im improve organic matter, we are expecting that we shall improve on the porosity of the soil, which will eventually improve on the aeration of the soil. But we are also expecting that we should be able to reduce the bulk density and also maybe infiltration capacity. If they are catered off, then we are hoping to improve on the soil health of this experiment, which is the hazelnut cover cropping experiment. So we are expecting that apart from only nitrogen increment from the biological nitrogen fixation, that when this plant matter is decomposed into the soil, it will also be able to increase on the other nutrient availability that we can get from this soil organic matter. So it is all a way around advantage that we are looking at and we hope to develop in conjunction with the grower a better beneficial management practice after five years uh, of this experiment. This trial originally came to my attention through the BC Hazelnut Growers Association. The motivation for the association to be involved with the Living Labs is a couple of different reasons. So a number of our members as a part of the association are really interested in increasing yield. I mean most members would be I would think, but um, other members would be interested in uh, reducing nitrogen inputs, trying to maybe get rid of it altogether. Other membership would look at it like um, maybe seeing it as a more holistic way to farm, that there's a different way to cover crop between trees and if there's a mixture that they could plant that is going to naturally improve nitrogen levels and reduce nitrogen input, then that's really attractive to them too. I'm really interested in general in seeing our industry thrive and uh, seeing if there's low risk and um, reasonably low management um, trials or ways that we can um, contribute to our industry or um, yeah, change our management practices to, to better adapt to a changing world. So, this, this one seemed like an easy one for us to do.